once a fixture across the world and particularly throughout Asia, from the spectacular approaches into Kai Tuck to the 569-seater Pokemon jets in Japan, the Boeing 747-400 is an icon. Almost 700 of them were manufactured, with a type reaching its peak in 2005. With the introduction of the Boeing 777-300ER and later the A380, A350 and Boeing 787 Dreamliner, its number has been steadily declining, with plenty of major carriers retiring theirs in recent years. China Airlines, Qantas, Thai and Air India only retired theirs in the wake of the pandemic. The latter we also flew on back in 2018 on a flight from Mumbai to Hyderabad, which I highly recommend you check out as well. East Asia, where it was once impossible to visit an international airport without spotting one, or, well, dozens, is now left with just a single 747-400 in passenger service. Not a single airline, a single 747-400, and its days are number two. That's why I'm all the more excited to get the chance to bring you along on a flight on that last 747 and document every little detail about it for when the inevitable day of its retirement comes soon. So in today's video, we'll dive into the history of the Boeing 747 at South Korea's Asiana Airlines and, most importantly, take a flight on one from Osaka's Kansai International Airport over to Incheon. I am particularly excited to show you this video and I'm glad you've decided to join us today. Aviation geeks and frequent flyers, welcome to this new video, this one not as much a review as a documentary about East Asia's last Boeing 747-400. First of all, let's get a brief look at where the Queen of the Skies is still in operation because it's certainly not dead yet. The Boeing 747-400, as of February 2024, remains in passenger service at Lufthansa, where we even caught a flight on it in early 2024 as well, flying in business class in the nose of the airplane to document what their 747 was like as well. If you want to watch that video too, make sure you are subscribed to our channel so you won't miss it. Sporadically, the Boeing 747-400 can also still be found on select international services at Saudi Arabian Airlines and Iran's Mahan Air, both a bit of a headache to fly on visa-wise. And as a freighter, not dozens but hundreds are still in operation and will remain so for years to come. Our journey today begins in sunny Osaka, starting with a quick metro ride to Tennoji Station, from where we'll head down to Kansai Airport aboard the Haruka Limited Express, the ticket for which is 1840 yen or around 12 euros, taking you to the airport in 35 minutes and very comfortably so. Kansai Airport was opened in 1994 and boasts the longest continuous terminal building in the world at a length of 1.7 kilometers. The train gets you right beneath it, which is the airport's Terminal 1. There's also a Terminal 2, which is very small and only used by low-cost airlines, and we flew there just a few days ago on Japanese low-cost airline Peach, a video about which is coming soon as well. For this occasion, I splurged on a business class ticket, although splurged is the wrong word, as Asiana had a sale going on, and I snatched one for just 37,000 yen one way, including seat reservation. That's roughly 230 euros, which is a great deal. Check-in was very quick, as we could use the priority line, and I love this handy seating chart, as getting the right seat is very important to me, and it's so much easier to illustrate where I want to sit on a chart like this, as opposed to verbally explain it. But of course, for this journey, I had my seat reserved in advance already. After passing through the security fast lane, it was off to the end of the terminal, to which you could either walk or simply take this little shuttle train. Asiana Airlines passengers get to use all Nippon Airways lounges at Japanese airports, which have a beautiful minimalist design, a good selection of beverages, and as always, ANA's classic curry with rice and the famous beer pouring machines. Instead of chilling here for too long though, let's head to the end of the terminal to catch the arrival of our plane. Kansai Airport's Terminal 1 has fantastic single pane windows offering panoramic views over the apron and runways. If you've watched our channel before, you probably heard us say that our mission goal is to review as many airlines as possible. 
And that's not actually true. It's just a simplified version of the actual goal. I wanna go to any airport and be able to point at any plane and say that we have a video about it. That's my dream. And thanks to your support, we are making great progress. Scoots Boeing 787, we got a video about that one on a flight from Berlin to Singapore. United's Boeing 777, we flew on that too and have a new 2024 shot video coming up soon as well. But we still have a long way to go. Missing airlines such as Air Seoul, HK Express, or Hong Kong Airlines Airbus A330, although the latter is also coming up this year. Which airlines or planes do you want us to cover which we haven't already? Let us know in the comments. And now, here she is, our ride to Seoul. This Boeing 747-400 is registered Hotel Lima 7428 and has been in operation at Asiana Airlines its entire life, which started in 1999. It's the last passenger Boeing 747 in Asiana's fleet, but the airline still operates a few freighters, 10 to be exact. You might spot a difference between them as some have a short upper deck and some a longer one. The ones with a short upper deck were built as freighters, while the ones with a longer upper deck once used to operate as passenger aircraft and were converted to freighters at a later point. Of the six converted freighters, five used to carry passengers for Asiana and one was acquired from Air New Zealand and then converted. Of the four freighters that were delivered as such, three were delivered directly to Asiana and one was acquired from Japan Airlines. The single remaining passenger 747 is currently scheduled to operate selected flights from Seoul Incheon to Taipei until late March 2024, when, according to the latest available information as of writing this script, it is scheduled to retire once and for all. Flying within Asia is awesome, and I constantly come across clever things I've never seen before. With the hand luggage size limits, the airport has this metal box with magnetic strips to change the size depending on the airline. And I also highly appreciate an airline clearly communicating on when it expects boarding to commence. As business class passengers, we get to board through door one. To the left in the nose of the aircraft, the original first class cabin remains. It's not sold as first class anymore, but rather as royal business class, and seats there can be purchased for an extra fee in advance or be assigned at the check-in desk if still available. There are 10 seats, four on each side and two in the center. However, on this trip, I went with a seat on the upper deck as I have never flown a Boeing 747 upstairs before. For that, we need to head to door two where the stairs are located. Up there, you'll encounter Asiana's old business class with 24 Sigma Majesty seats installed in a 2-2 configuration with row 10 offering extra legroom due to the emergency exit door. I'll be in the row in front of that in 9K, which is a regular business class window seat. The Boeing 747 also comes with the storage boxes on the upper deck, just like the Airbus A380. Being 180 centimeters tall, the legroom is fantastic, and in the center you'll find some storage compartments for things like your shoes. There is a coat hook as well, and using this button, you can lower or raise the armrest, which has a tray table inside. There is a little flat surface between the seats with these little extensions. That's the control panel for the seat. Up here we have an adjustable reading light, as well as a partition for an enhanced feeling of privacy. Down here, some more storage space, a USB-A port and the audio port. Personal universal power ports are installed too. And above, personal reading lights and adjustable air vents. Before departure, the crew handed out little toilets, as well as the landing cards for South Korea, along with a pen, which is very thoughtful. On this flight, headphones and slippers were provided too. As we only have very little time to explore the plane once in the air, after all the flight is just 90 minutes, and there is a meal service too, let's take a look at the lavatory up here now. It has a really cool retro feel to it, but despite that was very clean and well kept. There are no amenity kits on flights this short, but various amenities were provided in the lavatory, including combs, mouthwash, dental kits and hand soap. Outside, the Boeing 747 has this water dispenser. I've noticed those on Lufthansa's Boeing 747-400 as well, and I'm very curious about how it works. I sure hope it doesn't take the water from the main tank, but rather has a refillable container above. If you know how that works, please tell me in the comments.
부상 탈출에 대해 안내 말씀드리겠습니다. Welcome aboard, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to familiarize you with the emergency equipment and emergency evacuation of this aircraft. 휴대선물은 머리 위 선반이나 앞좌석 밑에 보관해 주시기 바랍니다. Now it's time for us to push back and get ready to depart. The windows on the upper deck have two layers which are quite far apart and negatively affect the view we're getting. For example, from over here, we cannot even see the wing or the engines. Seatbelt signs have been turned off, let's go on a brief tour. Asiana's Boeing 747-400 has 364 economy class seats, bringing the plane's total to 398. If that seems like a lot, that's because it is, and it hasn't operated long-haul flights in that constellation. Before its reconfiguration in 2017, the plane had 42 instead of 24 business class seats. However, with first class being demoted to business class on these short haul routes, a section of business was taken out in favor of more economy seats. The four mid-cabin lavatories at door 3 remain though, as does the large center galley at door 4. In economy class, Asiana features Weber 5750 seats, configured in a 343 pattern, except for rows adjacent to the galleys, and at the very back. Being 180 centimeters tall, the legroom is very good, and with a Panasonic X2 entertainment system installed, the seats don't even seem too dated. Four more lavatories are located at the very rear of the cabin, in a pretty uncommon layout. The plane certainly shows its age, but much less so than I felt it did when I flew on Air India's Boeing 747. But back to our seat, let's have a brief look at the aforementioned Panasonic X2 entertainment system. It offers on-demand access to both Korean and international movies and TV shows. There's also a dedicated section for kids, some games, and apparently you can use the remote to make a phone call to the ground at a reasonable $12.50 a minute. A mere 20-minute phone call would be as expensive as my flight ticket was, so I won't give that a try, although I am curious if it would work. Let's have a look at what's on the menu on this 90-minute flight to Seoul. Asiana offers a good selection of beverages in business class, including spirits, domestic and international beer, non-alcoholic beverages including tea and coffee, and some wines as well as champagne. As for dinner, the choice was between beef or chicken, and special meals can be pre-ordered online for free. The tray table can be adjusted, which is very handy if you want to get up. Here's our dinner meal. For the main course, I went with a braised leek rolled beef, which was accompanied by some steamed tofu, vegetables and white rice. On the side, a selection of warm bread was offered, alongside some butter. Asiana also included some salad with pork pastrami, alongside some French dressing. And we've also got a slice of apple and peach cake, and to drink, a glass of water and some Korean beer. As is evident by the Japanese language packaging of the dressing and the presence of catering trucks at the plane during our layover, this meal was prepared in Japan, meaning it's catered off base, which for many airlines means a slight difference in quality and selection compared to if it was catered at their home base. However, there was nothing to complain about. I felt like the meal was very good in size for the length of this flight, 
each element was of superior quality and it was overall quite tasty. If I was searching for something to bitch about, and that's really just snooty bitching, it's that both main courses were rather unimaginative. Beef with quote, Japanese sauce and chicken with soy sauce are dishes I'd expect a European or American airline, which is not even trying to understand local cuisine to serve on their flights to Asia, and certainly not an actual Asian airline, with full access to both the Korean and Japanese culinary worlds to come up with. But that's not to say that the meal was bad. It was high quality, tasty and sizable, which is admittedly all that really matters. Towards the end of the meal, we were already starting our descent into Seoul. The baggage belt number was already displayed while still in the air, as was our parking position. Both great pieces of information to have before deboarding. And just like that, my first and last flight on Asiana's Boeing 747 has come to an end, as will the era of this jet in passenger service at the South Korean carrier soon too. I hope I was able to give you a useful and entertaining glimpse into what the plane is, or soon was, like, and what Asiana's short haul business class is like. This video was made possible with the support of our channel sponsors, who so generously contribute financially to our mission of capturing what air travel is like around the globe. Thank you very much to every single one of you, and should I have scratched the curiosity of some of you for more content, please make sure you are subscribed to our channel. Or even consider becoming a paid sponsor, which is possible right here on YouTube, starting at as little as 2 euros per month, which is just 24 euros per year. Simply click on the join button beneath this video or on our channel page to learn more. Whether you are a sponsor, a subscriber or simply stopping by for this one video, thank you very much for coming along and watching. I'll see you again soon for a new video and until then, why not take a look at what Asiana's long haul economy class is like. This time with food catered in Seoul as my 13 hour flight to Frankfurt departed from there and some delicious Korean in flight meals. Just click on the thumbnail displayed on your screen right now. Thanks again and safe travels.